Electronic shifting is seen as the top end of gearing, and while it is mightily impressive, there are some drawbacks. Here are seven reasons why you should get electronic shifting. And seven reasons why you should avoid. Before we get into an argument about shifting, this is why there's a perspex screen between us, by the way. Jokes aside, I'm not against it. But yes, first, we'd like to just ask that you pop a like on this video if you find it useful. Subscribe if you'd like to see more from us. And you can even hit the bell icon to get notified when we post a new video. But on to the first point. Right then, Becca, the first point that I am bringing to the table is how much better the shifting is. How much more precise than mechanical shifts can electronic shifts be? Well, with a mechanical system, if you push the lever to move from one chainring to the other, the front mech performs the same every time. With an electronic system, the front mech acts slightly differently depending on what gear you're in at the back. Take SRAM's ETAP system. When you move from the small chainring to the big chainring, the cage actually overshifts slightly to make the chain make the jump. Uh, then a fraction of a second later, once the chain is up there, the cage moves back inboard to its standard position, and DI2 is much the same. When you're shifting from the big chainring into the small chainring, the cage moves inboard in two stages. First, it shifts just enough to move the chain down, then a fraction of a second later, once the chain is down on the inner ring, it moves a little further across. Doing things this way avoids the possibility of the chain coming off, and the extent to which these two things happen depends on the sprocket that you're in at the time. Say you have the chain on the small chain ring and one of the larger sprockets, and you want to change to the large chain ring. The rear mech lets the front mech know that it needs to overshift more than it would than if the chain was further outboard on one of the smaller sprockets. The bottom line is that you get excellent shifting, even under load. Okay, I'll grant you the fact that electronic shifting makes a cool noise, but I bet that you've become rather complacent in your shifting, Liam. I'm going to assume that. Uh, chances are that you won't need to adjust an electronic shift system often, so it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you never need to touch it at all. Uh, with a mechanical system, you'll almost certainly need to adjust the gear cable tension after the first few rides, and probably occasionally after that, but that's not an issue with electronic shifting. You still need to keep an eye on the various components of an electronic system System, check the indexing and make any adjustments necessary, especially if the bike takes a knock or if you break it down and reassemble it for travel. Hmm, that's probably very true, but I think I can come back with a strong reply. Shifting with an electronic system is so simple. Changing gear with an electronic system requires far shorter lever movement than with a mechanical equivalent, uh, you're really just pressing a button, never needing to sweep a lever across. Moving the levers on a mechanical system is hardly the trickiest operation in the world, but it can be a bit of a reach if you want to shift across the entire range available to you. Things are just a little simpler with an electronic system. With SRAM's ETAP system, the lever on one shifter performs upshifts, the lever on the other shifter performs downshifts, and if you push them both at the same time, you shift between the chain rings. Uh, it's a really simple system to use, even if you're wearing big gloves and mittens in the uh, cold weather. It's no great revelation that electronic shift systems are more expensive than mechanical equivalents, but don't forget that as well as the initial outlay, you need to consider the cost of replacement parts. Say you come off and wreck a Shimano or Tegra DI2 rear derailleur, for example, and a new one is going to cost you around £250, compared with £85 for a cable-operated model, and you can't save money by downgrading to Shimano 105 like you could with mechanical, because there's no DI2 version available. And that's just the parts you can see. Uh, how much for a battery when that goes wrong, Liam? Oh, I remember that being about 120 quid. Well, while I'm spending too much money on bike parts, I might as well splash out on some extra shifters. On a road bike with Shimano or SRAM electronic shifting, you usually change the gears with the combined brake and gear shifters, a lot like you would with a mechanical system. But you can add satellite shifters anywhere else on the handlebar to make it slightly easier to change gear in certain situations, and that's especially true when I'm racing. 
Shimano offers climbing shifters, which can be placed on the tops, and sprinter shifters, which I absolutely love for the drops. SRAM has its blips, which can be positioned anywhere on the bar. Okay, um, running out of battery power is a possibility if you have electronic shifting. Like falling off at the traffic lights the first time you use clipless pedals, it's the sort of thing you'll do once and then make sure you never repeat probably. Uh, a Shimano DI2 system runs on a single battery and each charge lasts several hundreds of miles. Uh, the exact distance depends on how often you shift and the temperature actually. Um, you can check the charge status via the junction A which is either a box or a bar end option. SRAM is a little different as you can swap the batteries between the front and the rear mechs to get you home. So, have you ever run out of battery, Mr. Fan of DIT? Only several times. Um, it seems to get more frustrating each time. I really should know better by now. I really should. <laughs> Now, once a Shimano DI2 or Campac EPS system is set up correctly, no matter what sprocket you are in, you never need to adjust the position of the front mech to prevent the chain rubbing on the front mech's side plate because it's done automatically. After you shift the rear derailleur, you'll sometimes hear a whir as the front mech moves slightly to take account of the uh, chain's new position, the idea being to improve efficiency and reduce wear. SRAM says that this isn't necessary with its ETAP system because there's no danger of chain rub, uh, no matter what chain ring and sprocket combo you're using. This isn't to say that the systems don't need indexing properly, but once you're dialed, they really do run perfectly. Okay, I've got another one. Um, some people find it difficult to distinguish between the upshift and downshift buttons of a Shimano DI2 road system while wearing thick winter gloves. Uh, this is something we hear quite a lot, although other users report no issues whatsoever. Uh, with DI2, the upshift and the downshift buttons sit just behind the brake lever, one beside the other. Um, it's possible to hit the wrong one in big gloves or to hit both together, actually. On the flip side, when we discuss this, you said you find it simpler to operate a DI2 shift than a mechanical shifter with frozen hands. Uh, a tap on the button is slightly easier than sweeping a lever when your fingers are dead. Yeah, there are a few winter rides in the past when I really yearned for DI2. My hands were so frozen. Uh, it's worth pointing out that this isn't an issue with Campag or SRAM due to the way the shifters work. I have to say, Becca, I find the speed of electronics systems just so so good uh, if you want to shift right across the cassette then a mechanical shift system you need to press the lever more than once with an electronic system you can just shift from one side of the cassette to the other uh, when you press and hold the lever in it's just a little bit easier Right, okay, uh, the shifting might be quick, Liam, uh, but how long have you spent searching for the charger? <laughs> uh, both the SRAM ETAP charger and Shimano's USB DI2 internal battery charger are quite itchy and easy to mislay, especially if you're like me. Um, and if you throw in the chaos of, say, a house move. Yes, I will concede that much frustration has uh, come from trying to find my DI2 charger. Now, another point I'm gonna raise, you can customize the shifting with Shimano DI2, and you can customize the shifting speed and the number of gears in the system will shift uh, when you press and hold the lever. You can also swap the functions of the upshift lever and the downshift lever, and even the functions of the left and right lever. SRAM's first ETAP system uh, didn't have the ability to sh uh, customize the shifting, but the two new Axis uh, group sets can do that, and they do it from your smartphone. Personally, I love that I can change the Garmin screen with the two little buttons on the top of my hoods. While it might sound like a gimmick, in a race or a bunch riding situation, I actually find it so useful as I can keep my hands safely near the brakes. If you 
have a shifting problem with a mechanical system, the issue is usually pretty obvious. Um, you can tell instantly if the cable has snapped, obviously that's happened to me, uh, if it's too loose or whatever, and you can put it right. Uh, while I will admit that problems with the actual electronics are pretty rare, if you have a DI2 battery fail while you're out on the road, for example, as in it stops working entirely, it hasn't just run out of charge, it can take a while to get to the root of the issue and uh, you can be left with an unrideable bike until you've sourced a new battery. Now that could be a big problem if you're in the back of beyond. With an electronic system, there's very little routine maintenance and you'll never, say, have to replace a cable, or very rarely anyway. Uh, little, if any, tuning is required after the initial setup. Uh, even with that initial setup, it's very easy with SRAM's ETAP system. It's wireless, so you, there's no need to route cables through the frame, for example. Although mechanical shifting has been working fine for many, many years, you may be surprised just how durable some electronic systems are. I personally have been using DI2 on my cyclocross for many years now, um, and the pros certainly test out that durability in the really muddy races. If you don't find the benefits we've listed above compelling enough to convince you to change to electronic, no component manufacturer is going to stop offering mechanical shifting anytime soon. If you're buying a complete bike, you'll obviously get all the electronic parts you need, but if you're buying an electronic group set separately, make sure that you budget for everything that you need on top of the more obvious components. Um, as well as the shifters and derailers, with SRAM ETAP, you'll only need a charger that retails for about 30 or 40 quid. Um, there's more to buy if you go for Shimano DI2 or Campag EPS. On top of the shifters, derailers and charger, you'll need a battery and wiring. In the case of Shimano, you'll need a junction box too and a bottom bracket junction for the internal wire routing and um, you'll also need an e-tube wireless unit if you want to customize the function of your DIT system with your smartphone. I have to say I, I, I kind of agree with you there Becca I've built up a few DI2 bikes now and the hidden costs still sting. Um, Becca we've actually got through this uh, without having a fight the Perspex hasn't come into play so I'd say rather <laughs> successful. We did do well, uh, but what do you guys think? Is electronic shifting for you? We're sure that you'll have some strong opinions on this one, so please do leave them down in the comment section below. We always love reading them. Remember to like and subscribe, and well, we'll see you next time.